Hello everybody, my name is Puri Azadi from the Process Dynamics and Operations Group at the Technical University of Dortmund, Germany, and I would like to welcome you to the presentation of our contribution to the 30th European Symposium on Computer-Aided Process Engineering. Our contribution aims at the development of nonlinear prediction model of blast furnace operation steps. An iron making glass furnace is an energy intensive metallurgical process consisting of various physical and chemical phenomena for the production of hot metal, which is the prime feedstock for steel production. Nowadays in industry, the focus is on energy saving and environmental friendly operation. However, the question is that how can one identify the blast furnace operation status? The performance of this unit operation is typically characterized by three major aspects of productivity, safety, and efficiency. Therefore, the identification of these three major aspects is a guidance to operators to enable them making their future actions parallel to the operational goal, meaning energy saving and environmental friendly operation. Of course, there are tools for such an identification. However, there are limitations which make the application of some of these approaches hectic. Complex physical and chemical phenomena inside the blast furnace along with nonlinearly interconnected process variables make the application of first principle models for the identification of the blast furnace operation status demanding. However, for the same purpose, in the recent years, database modeling and prediction algorithms have shown a great potential with less effort in comparison to first principle models. Therefore, this work aims at the development of a data-driven model for the representation of the operation status of a blast furnace. I would like to first give you an overview about um, the process description, followed by the analysis of the process variables, so basically what input and output variables are required for the establishment of the data-driven model, and basically what are the target uh, ranges of validity of the output variables for the reasonable operation status of a blast furnace. In the end, I would give further details about uh, the methodology for the multi-step ahead prediction of the operation status. Okay, so starting with the process description, I would begin with the fact that the blast furnaces are typically divided into five major zones, respectively from the top to the bottom, the throat, the stack, belly, bush, hearth at the bottom. It's basically a counter-current gas-solid reactor in which the ascending gas reacts with the descending solid bed, producing hot metal as the main product and a slag and top gas as byproducts. In the gas phase, the hot blast air containing oxygen, nitrogen, and moisture is injected through the two years along with pulverized coal and enriching pure oxygen at temperatures of around 1000 to uh, 1300 degrees Celsius. It oxidizes the carbon-based materials uh, in the so-called raceway regions in front of the two years, producing the reducing agents carbon monoxide and hydrogen, which participate in the reduction reactions of iron oxide. The gas, while ascending, heats up, melts, and goes through chemical reactions with the descending solid bed until it leaves the top of the furnace at temperatures around 100 degrees Celsius after 6 to 10 seconds. On the other side though, uh, in the solid phase, which is nothing but the iron or burden layer and coke layers, the solid components are first heated up to temperatures around 600 degrees Celsius at which the iron ore goes through the so-called indirect reduction reactions in the stack zone, which is nothing but the reduction of higher iron oxide to the lower iron oxide wustite. Descending further, um, down to the high temperature regions of belly and bush, the molten wustite goes through the cyclic reactions of uh, direct reduction producing the molten elemental iron. After six to eight hours after uh, dripping through the active carbon zone, uh, the so-called dripping zone, and then accumulation in the voids of the inactive carbon region, the so-called dead man in the blast furnace terminology, the hot metal uh, is periodically tapped out from the bottom of the furnace through the tap holes at temperatures of around 1500 degree Celsius. So now the question rises, how can one identify the blast furnace operation status from the process variables? In order to answer this question, we would refer back to our process conditions. We just learned that the blast furnace operates at high temperatures with corrosive and harsh internal environments. Therefore, relying on direct internal measurements uh, is impossible and we need to restrict ourselves to monitoring the blast furnace operation status via conditions at the boundaries. One of the most representative boundaries of the blast furnace operation status is the gas analysis in terms of top gas temperature, pressure drop, and gas utilization. 
Now it's important to see how any of these variables can represent the blast furnace productivity, safety, and efficiency. As we just learned in the process description, the more gasification happens in the process as a result of higher injection of hot blast air, cold injection, and oxygen enrichment, the more gas is produced, the more reaction between the gas and solid bed occurs, and therefore the more production of hot metal occurs in the process. It's also important to mind the maximum threshold of the pressure drop in the blast furnace operation, which is typically identified by the geometry of the blast furnace and it's varying from 1.4 to 1.7 from one blast furnace to another one. Exceeding the maximum pressure drop in the blast furnace operation deteriorates the burden descent, implying less production of the process. The efficiency of the process is typically identified through the so-called gas utilization factor or eta seal, which is basically the ratio of the carbon dioxide in the carbonious portion of the gas phase. The higher this value is, the more oxygen has been removed with less carbon-based materials such as coal and coke, and therefore the more efficient the process is. As we just learned, increasing the oxygen enrichment would result in higher productivity of the process. However, there is an upper limit to that. Too much oxygen enrichment would increase the temperature at the bottom regions of the blast furnace, shifting all the reactions to the lower furnace regions. Since all these reactions are exothermic, higher heat losses happen at the bottom of the furnace, resulting in delayed indirect reaction. This leads to lower top gas temperatures of less than 100 degrees Celsius. Low top gas temperatures influences the effective working volume of the blast furnace and the permeability of the solid bed for the gas and uh, liquid flows, and therefore limiting the production of the process. On the other hand, low top gas temperatures makes the blast furnace more sensitive to low quality and wet raw materials, leading to process risks and instabilities such as a slipping, which is basically the irregular burden descent, or channeling, which is the direct tunneling of the gas from the two-year level to the top of the furnace, or in the very worst case scenario, the chilled hearth, which can be identified through the top gas temperatures of less than 80 degrees Celsius. Input variables predicting the gas analysis can be categorized into five major groups. Let's start with the blast variables. Hot blast is the origin of the gas, and due to the very short residence time of the gas around 6 to 10 seconds, any changes applied to the variables of the hot blast can directly be identified on top of the furnace through the top gas analysis. Increasing the blast volume, temperature, and oxygen enrichment would result in more gasification in front of the two years, more production of the gas, and therefore higher intensity of the chemical reactions between the gas and solid bed. Such an effect can be identified on top of the furnace through the top temperature and the gas utilization factor. The moisture content of the hot blast is responsible for the production of hydrogen as one of the reducing agents. Therefore, manipulation of this variable would result in the control of the portion of reduction reactions by each of the hydrogen and carbon monoxide. Such an influence can also be identified um, in ETOCO as one of the indices of the gas analysis. It is still required uh, to ensure that enough of reductant is present in front of the two years for sufficient gasification. Therefore, it is important to incorporate the amount of coke and its reactivity index along with the amount of co-injected pulverized coal at the bottom of the furnace among the input variables. Another influential uh, factor on the gas analysis is the type of the burden. There are two major types of burden, sinter and pellet. Sinter is a mixture of hematite and magnetite containing in average 1.4 mole of oxygen per mole of iron, while pellet is purely hematite containing 1.5 mole of oxygen per mole of iron. If you remember from the definition of ETA-CO, it's an indicator of the amount of oxygen removed during the process. Due to the fact that sinter type of the burden in general has less amount of oxygen in comparison uh, to pellet, it's expected that the amount of ETA-CO corresponding to the sinter type of the burden is in general less than the one for pellet. Therefore, it's also important to incorporate the amount of each type of burden as one of the influential factors on the gas analysis. Burden depth, which is the distance from top of the solid bed to the top of the furnace, the so-called stock line, um, has influence on the gas analysis in two different ways. The first way is that it's an indicator of uniform burden descent and uniform uh, permeability of the solid bed for the gas flow. Therefore, it's influential on the reaction conditions which can be identified through the gas utilization factor. 
Another way is that it's always kept constant by addition of colder material from the top of the furnace. The hot gas in contact with this cold material loses its temperature. Such an effect can also be identified on top of the furnace through the top temperature. Permeability of the solid bed, uh, which influences the pressure drop and the reaction conditions, is not only under the influence of the uh, burden distribution, but also the so-called reduction disintegration phenomena, which is related uh, to the fine particles of the sinter. In general, the composition of the sinter would also control uh, the permeability of the solid bed and therefore the pressure drop and the reaction conditions. In general, uh, FeO, SiO2, and MgO uh, make the sinter more resistant to the RDI phenomena, while CaO and alumina make it more prone to RDI. In the end, the top gas pressure influences the gas distribution flow and therefore the pressure drop. It also influences the velocity of the gas, the contact time between the gas and solid bed, and therefore the reaction condition. Such an influence can also be detected on top of the furnace through the gas utilization factor. So putting all the variables together, we come up with 17 exogenous input variables and three output variables. The input variables are also categorized into fast and slow dynamic variables, where the fast dynamic variables are concerned with the gas phase and the slow dynamic ones are related to the solid phase. The output variables are the top temperature, pressure drop, and the gas utilization, each of which has their own acceptable ranges of validity for a reasonable operational status of a blast furnace. So the top temperature should be kept above 80 degrees Celsius, the pressure drop should not exceed its maximum threshold based on the blast furnace geometry, and the gas utilization factor should be kept between 0.45 and 0.52. In order to investigate the importance of the input variables and the potential dimensionality reduction, the principal component analysis was carried out. As you can see, seven principal components incorporate 95% of the variations among the input variables. Plotting the accumulated contribution of each of the input variables over the seven principal components shows that all the input variables except the blast temperature have their contributions above the uniform contribution threshold, approving the importance of these input variables for the representation of the desired output variables. Leaving out the blast temperature is also motivated and approved by the fact that this variable is highly correlated by the pulverized coal injection, um, which is already incorporated among the input variables. Therefore, leaving out the blast temperature from the set of input variables leaves us with 16, uh, input variables and three output variables. For the multi bed prediction of operational status, the nonlinear autoregressive model with exogenous input based on the artificial neural network has been considered. In this model structure, the output is a function of the autoregression of the previous output along with the moving average of the exogenous input u. Uh, the corresponding time uh, delay of each variable introduces the dynamic behavior of the system in the model structure. So if you recall, we have 16 exogenous input variables and 3 output variables. In order to identify the suitable time delay for each of these variables, we need to refer back to our process uh, knowledge. So the gas phase has a very short residence time of 6 to 10 seconds, which is already less than our sampling time of 1 minute. Therefore, no time delay is considered for the gas-related variables, which are in fact the fast dynamic ones. However, um, based on the influence that the loading of the solid material has on the desired outputs, a delay of 5 corresponding to 5 minutes is considered for the slow dynamic variables, which are the ones in fact concerned with the solid phase. For the autoregressive order, uh, the bias information criterion was carried out, which is nothing but the trade-off between the model error and model complexity for a suitable autoregressive order. So as a result of such an analysis, a delay of 15 was considered for uh, the autoregressive section of the model. So in total, uh, the network was constructed with an input layer containing 116 nodes um, and a hidden layer containing five uh, layers with 30 neurons in each and an output layer with three nodes. For the training of this network, the plan measurements of the blast furnace number two, Schuelgern in Thyssen Group Steel Europe, um, 
were used, which provided us with 400,000 samples. For the training, the first 98% of the data was uh, used, and for the test case, the last 2% of that. So at last, here are uh, the free forward running simulation results of the multi-step ahead prediction of operational steps. As you can see, the average error of each output variable within its um, corresponding order of magnitude over the prediction horizon of three hours is low, which approves the reliability of the predictions despite the unknown disturbances. So to sum up, uh, in this work, a nonlinear data-driven model for the prediction of the blast furnace operation status was developed and validated by real plant measurements. As the free forward running simulation results showed, the model with a small prediction errors despite unknown disturbances is a suitable substitute for a first principle model of the same purpose, and it's also applicable to be used um, in a model-based optimizing control scheme. In the future, we intend to apply the developed model in optimal decision making uh, on the future input variables using uh, a model based control scheme. In the end, I would like to add that the project leading to this publication has received funding from the Ministry of Science and Energy in Germany. Thank you very much for your time and attention, and I would be happy to answer your questions.